Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, this is Six Gun. Welcome to this video. It's by request. We're going to be looking at some of the basic helicopter instruments in some of the vanilla helicopters that we find in Arma. Uh, specifically, the so called glass cockpit instruments, the sort of computer screen representations of wh uh, what otherwise are sort of uh, gauges, right? So we have a couple helicopters here from the Green 4 uh, faction, uh, AAF. We have the Wildcat and we have the Merlin. And over here we have, of course, uh, from NATO, we have the Ghost Hawk. It just That's a day one aircraft that came right out from the very beginning of the game. And then we have the uh, 2035 version of the Chinook. And this was from, of course, the uh, Helicopters DLC. And we're going to look at all four of these aircraft. We're going to look at the instruments. And we're going to talk about how to use them. If you're playing an Arma Life server, if you're playing a DayZ server, if you're playing uh, one of those uh, take and hold, take and hold terrain, uh, you know, the kind of missions that attract players of 80 to 90, the huge player counts on some of those servers. And you want to be a valuable helicopter pilot. You want to know how to use these instruments, and you want to fly with a great degree of precision and safety. So uh, knowing what you're looking at, knowing how to use the information is going to be very valuable. Let's fire this uh, Ghost Talk up. I do have Kimmy's fantastic helmet mounted display uh, as a mod that I'm running now, but I'm, I'm going to be really be relying on these instruments. Let's take a look at what we're seeing here. Uh, at the top of this screen that I'm looking at, we see these engine indications, these uh, needles that are climbing to the top. Then you saw those two uh, torque gauges drop to the bottom. The value of those is that they're showing you um, that the aircraft is ready to take off when you see the move. And then these torque gauges over on the side are sort of following my analog collective up and down. So when they hit about 40%, this I know this helicopter will lift. So that's kind of handy if you have to land and quickly leave. You can just kind of stage your collective until you get it like right about there. And you heard the pitch of the blades change. You see the grass kind of laying flat. And then, you know, when they say lift, 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 you give it a little bit of a goose, boom, and you're in the air. So that's pretty cool. I want to talk about these other instruments. Let me start, though, with this main screen here. Uh, this is what we call the attitude tape. Uh, you have your center line. It's your attitude indicator. So it's kind of an artificial horizon. And then you have degrees of climb or degrees of descent. So you have 10, 20, 30 degrees nose up. That's the blue part. 10, 20, and 30 degrees nose down is the red part. And that goes past that number in a real uh, uh, aircraft. It goes all the way in a sort of a circle around you, right, all the way around. At the top of that is a compass heading. Uh, I'm a little bit right of south. Let me pop over my uh, GPS to see what it says. One, nine, or two degrees. So I'm, yeah, almost straight south. Uh, and everything else on this particular screen is just cosmetic, right? So the real valuable thing is the uh, climb and descent part, and it's just a, uh, it, when you bank, it banks with you. So you, you see your degrees of bank and all that good stuff. Your real flight instruments are on this screen here. And we saw those four engine gauges. Um, also, I want to look at the, the three large round gauges there. On the left is airspeed. On the right is vertical speed, and then below airspeed is altitude. Uh, for helicopters, these three are very important. We pay attention to these all the time. The airspeed is given in knots, and it's accurate. A knot is a nautical mile per hour, so it's a little more than miles per hour. And it's airspeed specifically. That means your speed through the air. In other words, if you're flying through a 30-knot um, wind, in your face, right, a headwind, this is going to show 30 knots faster than if you're driving on the ground in a car. Make sense? Now, that kind of stuff is not really simulated in Arma 3, so essentially this is ground speed for all intents and purposes. The vertical speed is showing your rate of climb and or descent, how fast you're climbing and descending. And that becomes very important when you're settling in for landing and you can actually gauge your rate of descent so you can avoid taking any kind of damage. Uh, or you can gauge your rate of climb to if you need to clear an obstacle or, or get out of danger. And then the altimeter is showing actually about 550 feet. 
Now, we're not 550 feet above the ground. I mean, we're sitting on the ground, right? Well, it's showing altitude above sea level. And this area of the Posada military camp in beautiful northern Sarani, where we are, love Sarani, uh, the elevations given are our metric, of course, 153, 153. So basically, I'm 153 meters above sea level. That translates to, really translates closer to about 500 feet. So I think that number is maybe a little off. And if I want to verify it, let me fire up my helmet mounted display. And if you see that number 509, that's my actual altitude above sea level. So that number is a little off, but that's okay. That's okay. It's kind of valuable when you're planning a long distance uh, flight and you have a group of helicopters or aircraft and you want to cruise at a cruise altitude together and fly in a straight line above the terrain. So you want to pick a number, 2000 let's say, and just hold that number right until you're ready to descend to your landing. So that makes you look cool. Because looking cool is rule number one. Right? So let's lift this aircraft and let's see what these instruments can do and what they tell us. Um, I'm running, by the way, not the advanced flight model. I don't run the advanced flight model. Uh, it's way too squirrely for multiplayer. Um, if you ever follow Dyslexia on uh, YouTube, he doesn't run it. I've got one of my pilots who's a real-life helicopter pilot. He has his commercial rating. He hates advanced flight model. So I would recommend you not use it. Uh, when you're in multiplayer and it's not necessary you just want to fly in an advanced manner right all right we're up I'm just gonna clear that big house and fly out sort of fly south along this road here I'm watching my speed and it's picking up a little bit it's about 30 knots and I'm gonna let it drift above 40. I'm going to get a more speed. So I'm going to pull my collective up and push my nose down a little bit. And you should see my speed picking up. I don't want to push my nose down too much because this terrain is uh, rising in front of me. So I want to match that. But you can see how the attitude of the helicopter is kind of very nose down. And as my nose sort of tips up, you can see that vertical climb indication start to climb. I'm almost at about a 2,000 foot per minute climb and it's accurate so if I maintain that climb rate in 60 seconds I'll be 2,000 feet higher than I am right now I'm slow enough I'm, a, I'm a under about 60 knots or 60 to 80 knots where my anti-torque pedals actually still work um, I'm actually running joystick throttle pedals and track IR right I'm using the whole thing and if you don't have pedals, if you have a twist function on your joystick, a lot of people use that, and that works great. Uh, I would say for flying helicopter, pedals are much more commonly needed than in a fixed-wing aircraft, especially at slow speed, because you can get the tail swing that tail around and uh, clear obstacles with ease. Now we're descending, and I'm going to take it down almost to the ocean there. What I kind of want to do is see what the altimeter does. As we're doing this, notice what part is moving. The actual attitude tape is barely moving, but it doesn't bank. When I bank, it's that waterline mark, that sort of elongated W that's doing the banking. That's not a fabulous design, I have to say, because you want all the instruments to show what the horizon is doing relative to the aircraft, not the other way around. But once you learn how to read these instruments and, and they, you know what they're telling you, then I'm kind of going backwards a little bit. I don't like that because I can't see where I'm going. So now I'm almost down over the water, I would say. And that's about as close as I want to get. Let me third person. I'm going to get really low over the water water here. There we go. And I'm actually going to use auto hover. I hate using auto hover. Only use it when it's absolutely necessary, but I want to test the altimeter. Whoops. That's it. Easy. Easy. And the only way 
way to really arrest my climb is to do that. Now notice the altimeter is like 90 feet. I am not 90 feet above the water. Uh, 40 feet maybe. There we go. All right, that's closer to 10 feet. Let's see if that looks. Meh. I'm thinking the the belly is like five feet off the water, right? So there you go. I'm testing these instruments to see how accurate they are, and it's I guess reasonably accurate. Let's go ahead and pull the gear up because I really want to get some speed going. So I pull the collective all the way up and push the nose down to get my speed. Because I'm, s I'm tilting the rotors forward. Think of it as a big plate on top of your helicopter or a disc is how we refer to it. And it's pulling me through the air. And now I'm up to 100 knots. That's pretty good. Now as I get back to the base... I'm going to do opposite of what I did, so I'm going to drop collective and bring the nose up because I want to burn off my speed, and then I'm going to drop my gear. You want to get that done first if you have a retractable gear helicopter, so all you can do is, all you have to do when the time comes is focus on landing, right? And I'm going for that green spot. Uh, I sort of parked it in the editor right next to those four trees on the other side of that Chinook, but that's a little tight for landing, I think. Let's see. And this is another case, by the way, for not using third person, because really, in a vehicle, third person is not precise enough. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just park it in front of this house. I can definitely fit it. And so I've got this long helicopter behind me, probably 50 feet worth of helicopter. So I'm kind of aiming for the front door of that house. And this is... There you go. So we're on the deck. Everything's good. Now I'm going to power down, and we're going to see what the engine gauges do as I power down. You're seeing them rising up, and then they're all four of them are going to drop. Most people don't pay attention to this stuff. They don't even power the engines down. They just get out of the helicopter and start running. Right? But if you want to think of yourself as a true helicopter pilot in armor, you want to treat this like a real helicopter. You're not going to just sit down and just get out of it and run. You want to turn the thing off, right? All right, that's good enough. Let's check out the Chinook. I want to see if we have similar ga uh, glass cockpit gauges. Again, this is the DLC, and if you recall, those of you who have purchased the helicopter DLC, the helicopters themselves came in the base game. Uh, what you bought with the DLC was the ability to sit here in the pilot seat and fly these things. That's what you paid for. And it was, if I recall correctly, it was this aircraft and that uh, CSAT Huron, which is kind of a fictional um, sky crane, like mini sky crane that has like modular, different, you know, a little uh, tractor trailer things you can hook on that carry troops or medics or something. And it's kind of a cool idea but it's very cartoony and the instruments are uh, gross and uh, very disappointing for something that I actually paid money for as a DLC. Uh, let's see what's going on with this. So let me start the engine up. Now, this screen is basically just landing gear and everything else is cosmetic. That's it. Over here we have uh, these flight instruments that we need. We have the four engine instruments at the top, and notice that we have uh, airspeed, vertical speed, there's no altimeter. And what I'm worried about is that this thing wants to move, so I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to bump my lever up and then down. Nope, that doesn't work. I guess I'm grounded. It feels like this thing wants to lift. Uh, so these gauges behave a little bit differently than they did in the um, Ghost Hawk. There is a, it looks like a backup altimeter, but I think that's cosmetic. This thing does have that look down camera. That's kind of cool. Um, so again, let me turn on the HMD and just verify what it's telling us. So I've seen 513 feet above sea level on 5 feet above ground. So that's probably the elevation of the belly of the aircraft. 
Speed is zero, of course. All right, let's take this thing for a spin, see what it does. I'm going to give it some power, or collective, until it wants to lift. Looking at the grass, see how it's laying flat there? Boom. And let me pull the gear. Yep, and I just see the gear up indications. I do like that look down camera, especially if you're doing some kind of sling loading. There we go, we turn my GPS on. I pretty much always fly with GPS, even though I do use the instruments and I also use the uh, heads up display. But more pieces of data that agree with each other make me feel better. Also, uh, as you've seen in some of my other videos, we actually draw out our routes to landing zones. Um, we just follow them out that way, so we uh, have a good idea of where we're headed to. Now, this thing probably wants to go fast, so I'm going to open it up a little bit. I'm going to push the nose down, give it a lot of collective, and see how fast it'll go. Watch that speed climb, 80 knots. It's going to hit 100, that's 100. And then apparently, 130? is the fastest advisable speed. I just topped that at 120. That's as fast as this thing will go. Push the stick down a little bit more and see if I can get a little bit more speed out of it. Yeah, I got it into the red. A real aircraft has a, a set of uh, preordained uh, speed values that start with the letter V and one of them is VNE and that's called never exceed basically that's an airspeed at which you will stress the physically stress the uh, aircraft and of course that is not simulated in Arma none of that stuff exists in Arma try to level off through the turn here So what I'm doing is watching my speed, and I'm watching my vertical speed. I don't know my altitude, uh, so I'm just, you know, eyeballing, looking outside. And I'm going to make my way back to the Posada base. So I'm going to wait till I get my speed down to below 80, and I'm going to drop the landing gear. And I do have a key bind for this, but I just want you to see me doing it. So that 80 is uh, that sort of 6 o'clock number. Pull my nose up a little bit to arrest my descent, and that should kill my speed as well. There we go. Gear down. Now all I have to think about is landing. On my joystick, I have a zoom in bound, and I use it all the time. So obviously my obstacle is that big tree. So I'm going to come in over those two brown uh, sheds and park it in that green space between those little bushes in the road. And let me get my speed under control. So I'll pull my nose up and my collective down. And I almost came to a halt right there, so that's good. This is pretty responsive helicopter. That's good. See. Kind of overdid it there. I like the visibility in this one. As soon as I clear that, final descent to the ground. There we go. All right, let's see how I did. That's good. The rotors cleared everything. Everything's all good. As I uh, cut the engine, I'm going to see if these gauges move. It looks like they're not going to move. So these are kind of these are these two sort of generic uh, types of gauges: the green ones that we saw in the uh, Ghost Hawk, and then this type of instrumentation here. So this is missing the altimeter. All right, let's uh, have a look at the AAF helicopter. So uh, 
I like the Wildcat. It's fun to fly and it's pretty versatile. It's got uh, weapons and it has a you know the right seater can operate this uh, infrared pod, so that's very cool. Very similar technology to our um, MELB Little Birds that we run all the time. Plus, they can carry some uh, dudes in the back, right? But this thing has a little bit of a drawback, and that is these instruments are squished. And we see that tachometer climbing as the engines are starting. But that is the only actual flight instrument on that side of the screen. All those other green gauges and dials are just cosmetic. Could be the fuel gauge is accurate. The one that says GAL, that's probably gallons left and right, two fuel tanks. I've noticed most of the fuel tank gauges to be accurate. Uh, now here we have attitude indicator and then we've got the uh, compass below it and those do work. So let's put this thing up in the air and fly it around a little bit and see what we can see. So again, I have no airspeed, I have no vertical speed, I have no altitude, I have nothing. So if I want to fly around visually, this thing is just fine. Uh, if I, but if I want to fly with any kind of precision, if I want to do any formation flight, if I have to fly around a controlled airfield where a pattern altitude is a specific altitude, if I've got to fly a specific heading, a specific speed to, to fly formation with another aircraft that might be a different model helicopter than me that has different performance characteristics I need uh, instruments that are going to tell me what this thing is doing I'm not entirely sure that I'm completely level I'm just kind of relying on my instincts to fly and to confirm let me fire up the uh, HMD to see yeah I'm pretty much level you're seeing the altitude tape climbing but that uh, little arrow is right there So this is where, again, I don't mean to sound like a commercial for Kimmy's uh, helmet mounted display, but really this is the only reliable set of instrumentation in every single helicopter you'll find in the Armaverse. You know, if it's even an import from Arma 2, uh, no matter what the mod is, there's some mods out there for helicopters that guys like to use because they've got some cool features for the ground guys to use, but they're don't really have any flight instruments so for our pilot from a pilot's perspective um, they're not as useful all right or you could say not even as safe to operate so let me put this guy back down and again I'm gonna pretend that I don't have this and I'm gonna try to land this thing safely I'm trying to clear these trees uh, trees in armor generally are about a hundred feet high so you can use that as a gauge of your altitude above the ground and then I gotta tuck in between the rotors of that beast right there that Merlin and those fuel tanks so obviously if I make a mistake one way or the other uh, at the very least it's gonna cost somebody a lot of money probably me and then I'm gonna tuck my nose in right against that green bush right there beautiful now let's see how I did yeah plenty of room I'm sure I gave somebody a heart attack, but uh, it's good for them. So there you go. So the flight instruments in this aircraft are not super useful. Uh, they're mostly just cosmetic. But it is fun to fly, so you have that going for you. Uh, finally, let's take a look at the Merlin. Uh, the original AAF faction, when it came out for Arma 3, uh, had a similar airframe to this, very similar, almost identical. It was called the Mohawk. This one is actually closer to the actual uh, Royal Air Force Merlin, which is a fantastic helicopter. It's fast, has three engines, and uh, you know works for the Royal Air Force, Royal Navy. So we got a lot of screens here, right? Very modern. We have uh, flight management computer, although this stuff is all um, cosmetic, but you know it's audio controls, radios, all kinds of stuff there. So let's see what our actual instruments look like. All right, and here we have our the same set of instruments from the Ghost Hawk. So we have the engine uh, indications at the top, so RPM and torque. And again, I don't know that these model the actual functions on a real helicopter because you've got the throttle 
as well as the collective. And the throttle sets the engine RPM and the, and, and the rotor RPM as well. The collective adjusts the pitch of the blades because the rotor RPM pretty much stays, um, stays static. It never really changes. So I'd see a lot of different instruments here for this. And of course, this aircraft having three engines, I'd have three sets of engine gauges here instead of what I'm seeing. But I've got airspeed, vertical speed, al altitude. Uh, the altitude shows that it's about 500 feet, so that looks accurate. And then I've got my uh, attitude indicator, and I've got my compass, so that's pretty cool. Let me tell you a little bit about the attitude indicator, by the way. And it has that brown and blue, right? Brown is ground and blue is sky. So you want to keep the blue on top of the brown all the time. Very important to do. And it's got your you know, angle of uh, climb or descent in degrees. And then you have those little um, tick marks along the top uh, border. Those are bank indicators, right? The big tick mark that's nearest the top is 10 degrees, and then the little tick mark is 15. Then the next big one is 20, 25, and 30. And that's a standard uh, symbology in any modern attitude indicator for jets or helicopters or anything so you can tell what your bank and the best the, probably the steepest bank you should ever take under normal conditions would be about, be about 30 degrees right and of course in Arma we are always yanking and banking and doing all kinds of craziness but uh, that's what's recommended so under normal operations that's what you'd want to limit yourself to uh, this is just cosmetic right there and then all this cool stuff and here's cosmetic and that's all cosmetic but it looks awesome you know, so you can tell your passengers you know how to use all this stuff. Yeah, I know how to do this. So I like it. Let's take this thing off and uh, see what the instruments tell us. Give it some collective. And let's see if that same number shows up where I can lift right at the 40% mark. Yep. So I'm hearing the engines. I'm also hearing that rotor above me. And I'm at a slight climb at about... I'm still in the yellow on the speed, so about 15 knots forward speed. Pull my gear, and I'm going to give it some power. And right, let's go for a little road trip. I'm going to try to keep it as level as I can. So I'm fighting the stick forward and back to just keep that arrow right at zero. I'm not overdoing it, but. Each helicopter behaves differently at different speeds. I've got my collective all the way out. And I'm already up to about 120 knots, so this thing is fast. I'm climbing just enough to avoid the terrain. So outside, I mostly have a nose down attitude, and that's basically what helicopters mostly look like when they're flying straight and level because you're tipping the rotor disc a little bit forward I'm having to lift up over this terrain here and again I always recommend flying in first person for one thing flying in first person shows that you're a serious uh, helicopter pilot in Arma. and also you cannot fly with nearly the level of precision uh, in third person come around and uh, this is our last flight of this video get a little g-force right there so I'm going to have a little fun I've always loved the mountainscapes here at Northern Sirani just gorgeous, such a well designed map and just well loved by Arma players my speed is in the red a little bit so probably shouldn't be flying that fast I'll push the collective down a little bit and then pull my nose up that speed down. All right, I'll maintain a gentle climb. If you see that tall peak out there, old Arma players know that's the Pico de Perez, and that's the highest point on Serrani. And I forget the actual elevation. I think it's something like 1,500 feet. And we're going to park this beast up there. Or at least I'm going to try to. I'm holding it about 100 and 
just under 110 knots, about 108 knots, I guess. Try to maintain level. Give it a little bit more power. It wants to nose down on me, so it needs some more collective. Yep, there we go. So you can have real subtle control over the speed. And I'm, I'm gonna, probably going to do another video about this, but I'm going to talk about some of the, the tips and tricks of setting up your controls for Arma helicopter flying. One of the things I do is use the analog throttle control. Uh, I have that mapped instead of the re regular throttle control. There's some weird stuff about how Bohemia designed the throttle axis, uh, specifically the collective axis for helicopters, and there's a few workarounds you have to do to get any kind of fine control over the collective. I'm going to bring it around. I'm too fast for my pedals, but I'm going to bring this thing around and climb up a little bit to get a look at the peak. You hear those blades really chopping away up there. All right, now I'll rest my climb. And let me drop landing gear. I'm feeling very ambitious. My speed is down. I'm going to approach this thing from the sides. I've got better visibility. Try to stick it right between those big rock outcrops right there. Okay. I don't know. A little too close. Probably could have made it work. But I fly a little too conservatively to take that chance. So I tell you what we'll do. We'll just take it back to the house. How about that? So I drop my collective, and I'm just going to maintain nose position to keep me from uh, slamming into that cliff face in front of me. And notice the speed is holding. I'm at about 70 knots right now. That's about the speed of a Cessna if you're on approach for landing. That speed's not going to hold forever. So as I hit 60, I'm going to give it a little more collective and arrest my descent a little bit. Not too much. Not too much. And then I pulled my gear up. I should pull it back down. Because I'm thinking about landing. And I have my zoom in bound. And I see that green space where I was parked. So I'm going to aim right for that. Uh, obstacles are the trees right at the gate. Obviously the warehouses. There's a couple light poles right there. And then I've got to park it between that little house and the uh, wildcat. I'm going to do a couple of tricks to slow down. There we go. And now I really need to arrest my descent. I don't want to slam into anything. Because my visibility is very low. Now, in a real helicopter of this size, the pilot has four or five other sets of eyes looking out the sides. Right? His crew, his gunners, the, the tail crew, they're all looking out and talking on the intercom, telling him, you know, is he clear? Because you obviously can't fly a real aircraft of this size by yourself. You know, it's a Winnebago for crying out loud. So in Arma you're expected to be able to do that. So the way you avoid collisions is you fly very, very conservatively. And it may look slow to you, but it doesn't look slow to the guys on the ground. And what's more important is you get them on the ground safely, you get the aircraft back, you don't lose the aircraft, you take it very seriously the loss of an aircraft especially the loss of passengers because you just you know had a big dent in everybody's gameplay we all know how long it takes to respawn an arma and get back in the fight so that's something very important so there you go let me go ahead and shut this thing down and again we'll watch the extension instruments respond spooling down and if this were an actual server and if this were at night i probably would have my collision lights on and as long as the engine's running, these lights are on. That's kind of uh, the real world way to think about it. Because that's an indication that you're about to start the engine. So as soon as the blades pull off, I turn the collision lights off. And at night, of course, we may fly with night vision, but, but I always uh, use a landing light on approach, not just for myself, but also to for other aircraft and people to really see there's a helicopter coming. With all the lights that, that flare in your night vision goggles, sometimes you need that a landing light
to see that uh, there's a vehicle moving. So there you go. Hope that uh, helps you guys understand how to read these glass cockpit gauges in these vanilla helicopters. A lot of these same gauges are used in helicopters in a lot of the most popular uh, mods out there, including RHS, uh, CUP, and uh, a lot of the most popular ones out there. Right. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was useful to you. And if you like it, please uh, hit that like button, uh, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's some other stuff that you want to know about, if some other questions you have about flying helicopters in Arma. And uh, I'll, have, I'll be happy to do a video about it. I've got some other tutorial videos coming and always uh, some great gameplay stuff. Um, I'm streaming live on Twitch over the weekends. And uh, you'll also see me on uh, Twitter posting about new videos and also uh, hit me up on Steam. Uh, same uh, Steam profile. So until uh, next time, guys, fly safe, and uh, we'll see you again.